What it do y'all, it's your girl Makeup and Travel and for today's video, your girl wanted to rewind and re-look at my predictions for the beauty community in 2021. So at the beginning of this year, I went ahead and posted a video talking about all of my predictions. I did that sometime in January and today I just wanted to kind of go back and look and see what my predictions were, how good I did, etc, etc. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to do another version of this for 2021. 22, but I just figured why not wrap that video up, wrap that kind of series up with my understanding of how those predictions may have actually come true or not. If you're wondering about this makeup look, I didn't record it, but it is just with my Huda Beauty nude palette, specifically with the browns on the bottom row. If enough people really want to see the look, then I will. There's no worries on that, but I genuinely don't think this is... A pretty enough look if you will that it's necessary for me to record it and I just wanted to throw some makeup on because I am falling slowly behind in my recording for these last couple of days in the series and all of that I didn't even put on the rest of my lip products so I need to change my battery I'm gonna finish putting on my lip products and then we will get started with the video Alrighty, so number one what I had on my list was that brands need to become more inclusive to really survive and although a lot of things have really been affected by COVID continuing to be so problematic and apparent um, and growing in the various variants uh, throughout you know 2020 and 2021 and what looks to be even potentially in 2022 I do think that more brands are getting the message that inclusivity is going to be key moving forward with their complexion ranges. And this is not only sticking with concealers and um, and foundations, also bronzers, blushes, and highlighters. These are all parts and aspects of your range that you truly need to be more inclusive, even with your eyeshadow palettes. So even some eyeshadow palettes that I have right near me, which are even in my project pan, okay, I'm just going to to pull out the top two that I had in my drawer. The Huda Beauty new nude palette. How inclusive is this palette truly? Because for me, I can use some of these darker tones and these darker uh, burgundies, but these light shades, I don't know how inclusive they are. How easy is it going to be for somebody who's super pale to use some of these more pigmented uh, formulas and sh and shades? And then how inclusive is it going to be for somebody of my complexion or deeper to use a palette like this? So the idea of inclusivity is really even key when it comes to eyeshadows. And you know, you can even find the, or make the argument with the modern renaissance, right? So you can see a majority of my pans are in these darker, deeper, richer tones where I'm reaching for them more because they work more on my complexion. They just look more natural. They just blend more efficiently, effectively on my complexion. And so for me, yes, by all means i really want people to focus in on foundation concealer powder bronzer cream bronzer blush and cream highlighter cream and powder highlighter and cream and powder blush they need to continue to look forward to everything lip products eyeshadows everything everything needs to be inclusive as much as possible i understand the smaller brands the more indie brands may not be able to have that revenue that income to really expand the range but i think if you're going to do a skincare range you need to at least make ensure that each demographic each shade depth or lightness has equal um, capabilities to find a shade that works for them number two is 
that I thought a lot of companies were going to be changing their factories from Europe or um, Asian based factories to more US based factories. And granted, I don't know the ins and outs of every company, so I don't really get that type of information, if you will. But it seems as though that hasn't necessarily been a thing that people have been doing. It seems as though these brands are just kind of taking that L and just being willing to wait until whatever factory they have this contract with or they know can create the formula that they want until it ships to the US. It's been quite interesting though because depending on the region that the factory that they are waiting for is from and then also where they are a lot of things have been stuck in ports and so the idea of maybe not moving forward and progressing in a better business mindset may continue to hurt these brands in the long run whereas they may have not seen it currently in the short term Number three is to find distributors in other countries so that maybe the company's base, like let's say in South America, in Europe, in Africa, anywhere, Africa is a continent, not a country, but in all of these other geographical areas still has the capability to get the products in a more efficient, more quick manner. I haven't necessarily seen this with a lot of these, of course, smaller indie brands. I think it's just hard for them to really be able to do that because in a lot of cases, they are handmade products. And so the idea that they can really manufacture enough products to send to a distributor ahead of time and kind of eat the potential um, uh, price of that is just not feasible but I do think that some of these bigger brands are actually doing that more in how Fenty originally launched where she had distributors in pretty much all of the major locales in uh, the world so that everything releases on the same day no matter where you are and so I think we're moving forward to more of these bigger brands doing that and then hopefully sooner on you know there will be like a distributor that like focuses on indie brands or something where all of these smaller brands can really be found in some of these harder to reach air not harder to reach areas but in these areas that it's harder for them to ship to so that it's easier on their customer and easier on them as well because i find that it's hard for them to kind of grow their company if they're shipping from one country one state one area and having to pay $50 for each package that goes across the world. Instead, if they just have one distributor that's already across the world, they may have a bigger, uh, fan, not fan base, but a bigger margin of error for people to be willing to actually purchase from them in the first place. So I definitely think that is something that we're gonna see more of. Have we seen all that much this year? I don't think so, but I do think that more businesses are gonna try and be more business mindset, mind business minded because at the end of the day that's going to be better for them in multiple different ways number four better sales throughout the year i think this is an easy easy one it can self-explain itself right there there have been so many sales in november and december alone this year that it's honestly obnoxious every time i open up my mail app i have at least 20 to 30 emails that I need to delete because it's either repetitive emails that I've already known about the sale or sales that I just do not want to participate in. Sephora and Ulta alone in December have sent out at least three to four different sales. Wait, they've sent out <laughs> Sephora and Ulta alone have had about three to four sales themselves separately, you know, uh, respectively. And that's unheard of, extremely unheard of. Right now, I think uh, Beauty Deals BFF, I'll try and find the um, post that she did, has showed that there's literally, there's literally like four different coupons circulating right now for Ulta alone multiple of them are 20 percent off there's some that are like ten dollars out of 40 20 dollars of 100 all of this stuff it is so much it's insane i understand like i said everybody is trying to make that last big push of money to close their quarter in a really nice way i get that i do okay but as a consumer that is a lot of 
just information it's just way too much information on my point of view and like it's honestly deterring me from wanting to shop as much as I could or should you feel me even uh, Natasha Denona I recently opened up my email and she just recently sent out another coupon or another kind of sale alert situation where right now she has a sale for I think ten dollars off of 40 and then maybe no 10 percent off of 40 and maybe like 15 off 150 or something to that effect i put it on the screen and i thought about it i thought about it because there are about two palettes that i do want to add to my collection from natasha denona one's in the bigger uh pan size and the other is in the smaller pan size but neither of them are limited edition i don't need those products right now i can wait until a later time period where it's more financially viable for me personally to pick it up and that's what i'm going to be doing so for me although i am happy that there are more sales it's maybe lowering the bar for some people who may have just wanted to get their like yearly Natasha Denona palette or their yearly Pat McGrath palette or their yearly whatever insert perfume whatever product I appreciate that because everybody's struggling like people are struggling right now so I do appreciate the fact that these brands are and these distributors are providing the the discounts available it's just too many calm it down calm it down if you're gonna do a 20% off sale just do it for the whole month don't pretend that you want to end it today and you do another one tomorrow. Sephora, why did you make it such a big deal for Rouge to get 20% off and then literally the next day you gave everybody 20% off? It makes absolutely no sense. And for me, as much as I love a good sale, make it make sense. Fix it. Number five, my thought was that brands are gonna need to do more unique color stories and more unique textures to really get the consumer to pick products up and i truly do think that that is something that across the board a lot of people have really been focusing on if something doesn't have a dual chrome a multi-chrome in the eyeshadow palette specifically indie it's pretty much not going to sell like at this point indie brands you have to come out with the an eyeshadow palette with multi-chromes or tri uh, triochromes multi-chromes or dual chromes to really get people who are deep in the indie market to really pick it up then when you get more on the mainstream side of things i think that the products in the eyeshadows palettes specifically that are not unique have not been selling which is why you see them on 50 percent off sale right now etc etc you really need to be unique as a brand to really stand out among all of these other brands that are coming out out of the woodwork but also among all of these brands that are giving bomb sales you really need to just set yourself apart or it's going to be hard for the consumer to really want to pick anything up specifically if your brand is higher priced and just not really well known or something to that effect or even like a charlotte tilbury i didn't pick anything up from charlotte tilbury this year granted i don't think i've ever picked anything up from her but still i wouldn't because there was nothing unique from the brand yes charlotte tilbury is a well-known makeup artist she's a well-known brand but what is it that she's bringing to the table that is going to add value to my collection i try to kind of always repeat that little phrase to myself before i hit click on the button because if i cannot distinctly tell myself before i get the product what it's going to add value that means i don't need it and so for me you know i think this is definitely a thing that we saw in 2021 and i think we're going to continue to see it in 2022 as so many consumers are just going to be a lot more critical of their makeup and beauty purchases as a whole as we continue to struggle through this pandemic while people are still struggling to get a job find housing put food on the table etc number six i thought that the idea of these quick launches in the beauty sphere was going to slow down and i do think drastically across the board that is something that we definitely saw happen a lot of brands like i said their distributors their manufacturers are abroad and so the idea that they were really going to be able to pump out products left and right 
if they're like US based or if they're based in a different country than their factory was was just extremely hard in addition I just feel like the idea of the coronavirus slowing people down not allowing companies to really come together and brain uh, and think about you know different formulas different patterns all of this stuff it slowed down even their manufacturing of ideas to give to these manufacturers and so for me I think this really did happen a lot of things slowed down I am concerned because when the pandemic ends I do have a feeling that a lot of things are gonna be pushed out to us slowly trickling into the US or to wherever the company is based and they were like oh we finally have these products we need to make our money off of these products let's just sh buy or send 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 everything out and we're just gonna keep we're just going to keep dropping launches, keep dropping new lines, etc., until we can kind of break even on all of these other ideas that we previously had but weren't able to release. So I am concerned about that, but as it stands, unfortunately, it looks like 2022 is still going to be a rough year um, for the world. So I don't think we're going to have to see that necessarily flip back as quickly as 2022. Um, as of right now hopefully i am wrong i really hope i am wrong <laughs> number seven makeup brands starting another brand skincare brands starting another brand and that's been a thing that has been a huge thing where a lot of brands have started kind of secondary companies or ideas that they are either releasing off of their main range or they've literally created like juvia's skin completely different or is it juvia's place skin i think it's just juvia's skin but regardless that brand came out as a makeup company and then started a whole new company with a whole new website all of that and i think this is smart on the brand side of thing on a business perspective i think this is very very smart and i appreciate the hustle i really do but but I find that in a lot of these cases, the brands that go from one range in beauty to another, they don't do as well on that second range because that's not where their heart is. That's not where they really, they don't really care about that, right? It is just a way potentially to make more money. And so for me, I just, you know, I've seen it. It's been happening and I think it's going to continue to happen. There have been ranges like uh, Fenty starting her perfume, although I think that she had perfumes previously to this year. But for me, it was the first time that I saw her come out with perfumes. You also saw ColourPop come out with um, bath products and body products and all of this stuff. I just think that it's definitely going to happen more in 2022. And it definitely happened in 2021 should have happened should it continue happening that's another whole nother discussion then number eight brands needing to stay consistent on social media i think this is super super important and it we have seen how important that is um in 2021 a lot of brands have not only decided to stay uh consistent i feel on social media but they've branched out to other types of social media tiktok has boomed boomed this year um mainly because of the fact that a lot of countries had to do countrywide nationwide however one you phrase it shutdowns where only emergency personnel left their houses to try and control the pandemic and so social media was a way for people to have an outlet to do something to not be bored etc etc and so a lot of things such as tiktok really blossomed and so these companies are really going to have to stay relevant on these social media platforms to continue to reach their target audience especially now please don't mind this i i'm going through a little something right now with the pandemic and so many people maybe not leaving their house as often the idea that you will gain customers and get like the continued customer base to realize that you drop something new just by them seeing it in the store is not re reliable anymore so these brands are going to really have to focus and hone in on these social media creators and innovators and whoever to really help them move forward and stay relevant. And so I think that this is going to be one of the more 
important things as we continue to move on to 2022 but also i think it was a super relevant thing for 2021 i think some of those brands that just were not as relevant and were not as consistent posting on social media such as certify i saw on my instagram that they were saddened because a lot of people did not realize that they were still a brand you got to stay relevant baby so if you are not reposting people's pictures if you are not constantly launching new items people are not going to know that you're still a thing people aren't and so the idea that they were saddened by that although i understand you got to do the steps that you need to do to make sure you stay where you were and so that's kind of that I need to take a break because my my whole makeup is like deteriorating as we speak okay two more on my list number nine i thought that brands were going to expand who they send pr to and i've started to see a couple of brands saying that they're doing content creator searches now at the end of 2021 going into 2022 and i think that is because they're seeing how necessary it is to give these products to certain creators and to get a different variety of opinions so um the brand that i'm thinking of off the top of my head is unearthly cosmetics they recently rebranded to unearthly cosmetics from alien cosmetics and they do not have a very inclusive instagram page at all it's not a thing not their swatches not their uh photos their reposts none of that now how problematic is that i don't really know because i don't know if there are a lot of people of color who actually use their brand if we're being honest i really don't see a lot of people of color talking about the brand and there's generally not a lot of people of color who actually do a lot of indie reviews period so how problematic is it i don't think it's super problematic but i think they should stay ahead and they should be looking strategically not only for people of lighter complexions but medium and deep skin tones i think the deepest skin tone that i've seen on their pr list and halfway consistently talking about the brand is karen harris and karen harris is a strong tan she is a strong tan so for that brand themselves i hope they use their uh cre um content creator search to really get a wider range of deeper skin tones involved in their brand um even if it's something where they're literally sending the product just to get swatches from the individuals to put on their instagram and their uh website i think it'll be really helpful once again just to add that inclusivity but to also get more representation the more people you have representing your brand the deeper skin tones maybe people who are my complexion aren't buying from the brand because they don't think the products will work on their complexion so i just really hope that moving forward uh more brands will use their pr searches and even just the use of pr to ensure that they have a wide range of individuals not even just skin tones but also uh follower count I think I touched on that in my previous video, but just having a wide range of everything will just make sure that you are completely well-rounded as a business, but also just a really well-rounded social media because that's what it is pr is social media and it's advertisement and so if you don't round your advertisement you're going to pigeonhole yourself into one demographic that you are targeting and you're missing out on everybody else okay and then the last thing that i want to talk about is that brand owners needed to be professional that was something that i felt was really really important um because there are quite a few brand owners that fell from grace in 2020 and i can't distinctly remember if the ofra debacle was this year or last year but to my knowledge that is the one owner that is truly just killed his brand killed it there are a lot of there are a lot of youtubers that are in that midi range getting into the bigger youtuber range that pretty much said they're not buying from the brand and that is hurting them so you get that cluster of like angelica nequis samantha march etc etc all those people in like that follower range count but also in that friend group that pretty much 
I think all of them basically said they're taking a break from the brand, giving it some time. And that hurts. It hurts. It hurts the brand's bottom line. And hopefully brand owners continue to just stay respectful, have your opinions, but be a smart about where and who you discuss those opinions with because it will affect your bottom line, nobody else's. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my rebuttal, if you will, to my video that I did at the beginning of this year. I would love to hear any of you guys' opinions on any of the 10 kind of bullet points that I did. I may or may not, like I said, do this again for 2022. I truly don't know. Um, right now, I am doing things at the cuff of myself, okay? Because it's getting rough okay there are a couple of days before Christmas and your girl got a lot of things to cook so that's all I got for you guys today I hope you guys enjoyed this video leaky eye and all and I will see you guys tomorrow with another video tomorrow so I'm recording this on the 23rd so tomorrow today I'm uploading this this is Christmas Eve so tomorrow's video will be my project pan conclusion I it's gonna be a bittersweet conclusion but I am really excited to kind of talk about not only what happened in the 12 pans of Christmas but also just my project pans in general this year how well I did overall in actually accomplishing some of the goals even though I didn't necessarily round out the year with those same exact project pans so I hope to see you guys tomorrow with that roundup if not you know spend Christmas with your family because I'm gonna be with my family okay but yeah that's all I got for you guys today I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in my next one bye guys